I think the biggest thing that I lose sight of, that's another, like, important point, is just, like, there's 340 million Americans. And there's, like, a million of those maybe, maybe are on Twitter. It is actually such a small portion of the population of the world. But there's this thing, I think it's called false consensus bias, or false truth bias. It's one of the two. It's like this idea that, you know, you know everybody in your town, and because they, like, all agree with you, you can come to believe that everybody thinks the way you do. Then, of course, you're in for a rude awakening sunshine when you step outside of your neighborhood. That's pretty much Twitter, in my opinion, in a nutshell. It, you know, you're either on one side of it or you're on the other, and there's just no room for in between. I also want to know why we, as human beings, we feel a compulsion to put our shit on there. You know, it becomes like a second brain. It becomes like a running dialogue and log of the most banal minutia of our lives. And I'm not saying I'm above it. I'm saying I feel it too. I feel that compulsion. I gotta let Twitter know that it was a 20 correct shit this morning and... I wish a psychologist could tell me what it is inside us that makes us want to do that. Well, that's pretty heavy. A lot of people put their address on Facebook simply because there's a field to input it in. Are they like older folks too? Though, because I feel like I'm guilty of that. I always give away way too much information on the internet, I'm sure of it, man. Oh yeah, I should probably turn this shit in. I actually need all of that. I don't know, personally I've never felt the pull towards social media. I more so made mine out of, like, necessity, you know? Yeah, I, I get you, I do, definitely. I'm in a- I think I'm in a weird place, because I'm pretty sure I'm an introvert-extrovert. So, like, I've got that compulsion for attention. Yet at the same time, I long for privacy. So it's like, a, it's a total fucked thing for me, social media is. But at the same time, I know social media is cancer, and it means nothing. Like, probably my favorite piece of television writing ever is that Black Mirror episode where they totally... Uh... Roast Instagram and Instagram stars, and like, what if we build a whole society off of... Instagram as a currency? There's so much bullshit going on with Instagram right now and what people are doing with it. It's That to me is the lowest of the fucking low. What are we becoming? Like I have Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, but I don't really use them. You have Snapchat and Instagram? I've got a, I don't get on those two. I've got the Twitter though, but I mean like it's a human thing because the fucking leaders of the world fight on Twitter now. And it's strange in the sense that Twitter is not actually profitable. I don't believe they've ever actually turned a profit. It's very slim. I know their stocks aren't valued very well. But... What is it about it? I know the original intent of Twitter was that you would just have a community hub. Like, your fire station would have a Twitter. Your police department would have a Twitter. Your hospital. Your mayor. And then they would just tweet out what was going on in town. But the original intent was not that, like, everyone would have a Twitter. It would just be important people within a small community, and you would only look at your community's feed. And I feel like that original intent was really good. But it was one of those things, it's like shopping malls. A socialist actually designed shopping malls. A socialist designed shopping malls from Europe because he felt like America, you know, was getting ugly. We had all this urban sprawl and all these massive shopping complexes, and, and of course America loved and embraced the mall. And those first few malls, like Dawn of the Dead, are uh, fucking amazing. They're little cities. And of course, what a shopping mall became was a mecca of consumerism. Which is just ironic. It's not to make some kind of political point. But, you know, once the thing gets out there, you have, like, a really big idea in mind. And it seems noble. But... 
The map is not the territory, and no plan survives initial contact with the enemy. Twitter. It'll be a locally organized community hub where citizens of a town or village can look and see what their fire department, their police, and their mayor is up to. What is Twitter in actuality? A place where people shitpost and fight. Shopping malls. We want to end urban sprawl and cr and start to centralize American city planning around one shopping complex. It'll have apartments in it. It'll have its own security detail. It'll change the way Americans build cities. What is in actuality? It only added to the sprawl in the long run. And now, of course, malls are going under and it's changing again. But yeah, last time I posted, those things were like months ago. We should totally have Mega City. I am the law. I agree. We will in the future, for God's sake. It won't look like that, but... Like, Ohio is 100% going to become a Mega City. That's one of the things. I mean... I'm not at all going to this area, but I learned about the Twin Cities in a cultural geography class that I took at Ohio University. And they talked about how good that city was actually designed because they're really good at uh, re rejuvenating the inner portion of the city not the metaphorical inner city you know just like literally inside the city because they don't sprawl out they've got a good transportation network there's some cities in ohio that i really admire like new albany where you build the farms inside the city because ohio has great farmland so long as you give an industrial input and output and the farm traffic doesn't Hi merge there. with the regular traffic you're, you're good you can totally do that not yeah. waste the farmland sprawl is actually a huge issue because you build on you know Good farmland or useful infrastructure. But I think what's going to happen with Ohio is we have Columbus and it's a hub and we just keep building fucking roads and it just keeps spreading out and spreading out. And spreading. I'm sure Atlanta's the same way. Doesn't Atlanta have massive sprawl? Like, the city just to my north, about 30 miles to my north, is effectively now Columbus. And it's grown by leaps and bounds because of it, but... It's like, it was a tiny little redneck town. All right. And it's like they built this whole thing just on top of it. And if you have to, like, look close to see what was originally there... I think it's going to stop short of my area because my area is like a token. It's like a fucking relic from the past. They just use it to sleep here and to put their boots up and vacation here. They want to keep it quaint. So I don't think we'll ever get merged all the way in. We're going to be more like a reservation. Probably clear these guys. That'd be good. I know what we wanted to do. We wanted to clear out these last play cards. I don't think I ever made the explosives, though. Uh, apparently the Twin Cities was actually laid out well. It goes into, like, what something talked about. Where Boston... Is a really weird town and the roads are fucking tough to follow and you can like have an old farmer's market And then like right next to it will be a skyscraper Whereas Washington was like planned out just We're getting to a point now where it's not just lay out the city you have to lay out how the state is gonna look in like 50 years if I was in charge of Montana, that's what I would do immediately. Is we need to think about what the state's going to look like in 50 years. Once cities start growing, especially after this, after the COVID, it's going to be a huge exodus out of uh, New York and major metropolitan areas. It's already going on. New York's apparently going to lose 15% of its residents. They're going to move to areas like Salt Lake City. And Salt Lake City doesn't have a whole lot of people. I think those cities have to really start thinking about what they want to, you know... Naturally, they're going to grow. What are they going to look like in 50 years? Are they going to do it like Boston and it's just going to kind of happen? Or are you going to plan it out? Uh, 
Ah, oh, damn, it got us. I thought we dodged it. I love this rifle, though. I love the look of it. Yo, thanks for the help with our zombie problem. You the Gristle Penguins. You guys in? It's an issue in Ohio, though, because Ohio has really good farmland. You got a lot of uh, rivers, a lot of tributaries, a lot of s streams, a lot of creeks. You got a good fresh water supply. So we've got good farmland. But we're building fucking parking lots on top of it. We shouldn't have any more problem with zombie infestations for a while. <sighs> Something kind of cool in that regard is Amtrak's about to release a new train. This is officially becoming the fucking most dry Let's Play of State of Decay ever. But yeah, Amtrak's about to release its new train. Looks like it's decent. Too bad Amtrak won't build any fucking rail lines. But can you imagine if we could link up the United States with high-speed rail? Like, if you could link up New York and Florida, you could get a high-speed rail from New York to LA. You think- think about the magnitude of economic prosperity that could flow through those lines. I know it's really difficult because you basically have to have perfectly flat, even ground to get a high-speed train, especially to make it be able to hit the speeds that it needs to hit to be considered high-speed. But just think about it. Maybe the boring company, maybe we could do something like that. I think if it's anything we've learned during COVID, it's too much shit. Hog Pog, thanks for being here, King Hefla. What up, man? Too much shit moves via trucks. You gotta love truck drivers and everything. You know, Steven, good friend of mine is a truck driver. It's good, honest work, but... Holy shit, the supply line started to struggle during this whole thing. I feel like we need a faster, more efficient method. Nothing much, what about you, sexy? All you know. Just trying to play State of Decay and come up with commentary. Right now I'm on infrastructure. Probably figure out something again soon. We almost died here. We should be close. We're just trying to find the last plague heart, King Hefla. Yes, commentary. I vibe to the sound of 30 ounces of aluminum hitting their skulls. What is wrong? Dude, there's so... This game controls like trying to run through fucking mud since this last patch and I don't get it. Like, actions are delayed on the button press, your character doesn't move well. My shit is transformative, dude. My art. <laughs> no doubt. Who needs commentary? Just give us money. That's true. I'm just gonna sit here and wait till someone donates, then I'll read it and then I'll curse them out. Done. As we're getting on, uh, infrastructure fucking commentary. Best let- oh. Oh my god. That was actually kind of perfect. <laughs> How do we take, like, no damage during that, though? Yes. Yeah, what do we do here? I never took so senior photos. I don't know how to pose. You're supposed to, I think, look, uh... You gotta really stare. You gotta make your face kind of serious. This is the last zombie. Just fucking die. Right, we just need to wait. Then when someone donates, we'll just read it. But in the meantime, while waiting for that, let's talk about infrastructure. Would be cool as fuck, though, if they had that tunnel. I always thought the boring company, though, was gonna be, like, true science fiction. And they were gonna have a legit you know, pressurized tunnel, and you would get in a... in a car, and a, you know, like a tube, a train car, or a ship, and then you would get sucked in via the... sucked through the tunnel via the difference in pressure. And they had it as early as, like, the 1800s. They had already worked with that idea. 
And the problem is the um, lungs that they were using would give out all the time. But it was actually attempted as early as the 1800s to do something like that. Isn't that the traitor? Oh, damn it. I don't want him. I want to just find the last heart. But it hasn't been explored. There's going to be a zombie wailing on this car. But I can't imagine too many people would probably feel comfortable with the idea, even though... Yeah, so as long as the science works out, I bet it'd be perfectly fine. But it's not the speeding up that kills you, it's the stopping. Rip. And hey, what's your hero bonus, by the way? B plus labor? Boo. Eh. A marathon. Ooh, what the fuck? <laughs> things, weird things are happening in State of Decay. But that was... Dude, that guy just committed suicide. When I ran cross country, there was this old barn owl that sat there and watched our practice the entire day. And when we all wrapped up our run, the old barn owl just stared at us. And then it literally tossed itself right in front of a car and killed itself. And our coach told us that they'll do that. When they get real old, they'll just kill themselves like dogs. A freaking owl killed itself right in front of us. Well, that feral must have been real old at the end of its life and decided to say, fuck it. I mean, you do stop. It just stops everything else in your body, right? It squishes it. Not good. Not good. No, it's... What he actually is going to do is, like, way more dystopian than what I had hoped. I thought it was going to be cool. It was going to be, like, a new way to envision public transport. Because what we know is transport has to be a network. It's like energy. You don't just go on one source and say, oh, it's cars, just cars. You mitigate traffic if you can give multiple things, multiple means. Like, you know, you can bike, you can ride the subway. You can take a bus. Buses sometimes works. You can do monorails. I thought he was going to do, like, a pressurized tube. No, that shit's... It's literally the past that you get it like whenever you go to Disney or Universal or any theme park. It was like full on, I hate this word, but late stage capitalism. The rich people are going to be able to buy their way out of traffic. Their car will get ported down into a private road that's below the road. And all us poor folks will have to stay there locked in gridlock. And I guess it may be in some way that'll actually lessen gridlock for everybody because you take some cars out of the, ro the road. And I get it. If he's going to dig a giant tunnel like he is, there's got to be profit in the end. Otherwise, you don't dig a giant tunnel. But it didn't quite meet my expectations of a new vision of public transport. No, it's just a private road for rich people under the ground. <laughs> Worthless. That's it. Carbine, how big a capacity? Yeah, just a regular carbine. What's up with hair, too? The way that hair has become a Fortnite gun skin is really weird. Worth. Sometimes you just gotta shoot some zombies. I can't keep this up. You can and you will. Let's go assault. Oh, this rifle looks cool as fuck. Nice long barrel on it. Digital scope. Military truck. Well, the last heart wasn't out here. 
to keep going down the road. Private underground roadhead. Hey, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's true. When I was playing on PC, everything looked fine graphically. Probably some issues on Xbox's end. A bug with the recent update causes textures issues or something on Xbox. So there was no like that. Whatever the fuck that is. You know, now her hair's back to brown. The hair just keeps randomly turning into. It looks exactly like Emulsion looked on Gears of War on the 360. Let's make it really bright, shiny yellow. How well is Gears of War 1 aged, I wonder? The graphics. If you just go straight up OG graphics, not the remaster. I wonder how good it looks. I remember the rain falling on your armor in that game and thinking that was special. But I also remember, and I still think it probably has aged well, the rain falling on Samus's visor. What the fuck is Nintendo doing with Metroid? Why haven't we had another kick-ass first-person shooter Metroid? Why is that not a thing? Why does Nintendo like to just sit on licenses for rainy days? Pisses me off. I mean, it is what it is, but... Still, it'd be freaking kick-ass. Especially since it's such a kick-ass character. Because Nintendo kind of sucks most of the time. Nintendo expressly makes their games for kids. So they don't like esports and stuff? Yeah, but... Metroid Prime wasn't esports, it was just a kick-ass shooter adventure game. It was... It was Mario 3D for Metroid. They just like... I know that the one on SNES... They didn't really believe in either. And we all know it's like one of the all-time fucking classics. Super Metroid. Like, Super Metroid is such a great gem of a game, and it sold like hotcakes over in the States, but apparently Nintendo didn't think it was going to do for shit, didn't really believe in it, and they were kind of shocked when it succeeded. Dude, a first-person Metroid shooter game with a good story would be cool as fuck. I loved Metroid Prime on GameCube, and I was like a kid when it came out, and I watched my brother was in college, and he had- he always had a Nintendo. That he went Nintendo- he went NES, SNES, 64, GameCube. And I remember watching him play through Metroid Prime, and just being completely, like, immersed by it. And so I would, like, run around in my backyard, thinking of all the different things you could do with that game, and, like, Imagining multiplayer for it, imagining different characters for it. I would draw characters. I would come up with all kinds of ideas constantly safe to look around. Because it just felt like there was just so much potential and it's such a cool franchise No room for that But it's weird because it's such a beloved franchise and yet Nintendo gave it to one of their third-party companies Which I know they don't have a lot of that was the whole Metroid Project M That was a they went back to a platformer. It was 2.5 D and it had real mixed reception. It had a very mixed reception. I never played it though. But apparently the story's really freaking weird now too and confusing. And the franchise just seems to not be going anywhere or doing anything anymore. And that pisses me off because she's such a badass. It doesn't piss me off in the sense I'm gonna write an angry letter. I it just fr it's frustrating. It's such a cool world and a cool character. Hey, there we go. Maybe that's the last heart. They filed a copyright claim before a big Evo event and rescinded it right before the event just to make a point. Oh, that's weird. I couldn't imagine Namco or Capcom trying to get their game pulled from Evo. No, why would you do that? You make money from doing that. I mean, that... It's not like that hurts game sales, the fact that it's an eSport. That's really weird. It's like Nintendo's... ...hanging in there, but... ...they... ...of course Nintendo's hanging in there. I mean, my god, their fucking profit margin is massive. Their consoles sell like hotcakes. Nobody didn't have a Wii. And this, the Switch is just sold like... ...you know, toilet paper during the... ...during the pandemic. It's been... They're doing so well as a company. Well, the They're now. still super innovative in the hardware sense. Even the Wii U was a good system. It really launched at a shitty time and went underappreciated, but... 
And they released a ton of good games for it. I still love Nintendo games. They're always well made. They've got that old school gold seal of approval and they have so much history, but they they have failed to completely understand or adopt the trend that Xbox started with Xbox Live. When Halo 2 changed the world, Nintendo was wanted to know what is a Halo. You still gotta, what, have a friend code, right? If you wanna play with somebody on the Nintendo network, you've gotta do a friend code. Which is kinda weird because the Wii actually had some solid shooters, like... Uh, I believe it was called The Covenant. And... It, it, I'm pretty sure it was called The Covenant. And they also released Call of Duties on the Wii. That were apparently decent. There was quite a bit of delay. But you could play them online, and they were fun. Now that's the right idea. I didn't play them, but that's what I've heard, what I've seen. I wish I had a nade. Badass with a great ass, as Young would say. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Now, Nintendo is still one of the foremost companies, but they're just so... I mean, how old are they? Aren't they, like, as old as the fucking United States? They're just traditional. They're very, very traditional. And they're super innovative in hardware, but they're... They don't... They're not adopters at all of... What's happened with content creation, digital content creation, streaming, YouTubing, Let's, Let's Plays... They don't embrace that at all. As Wilso said, they don't embrace the esports thing, which is weird, especially since Super Smash Bros. is such a big deal. So many people. Yeah, especially the uh, GameCube and N64 Smash Brothers. And they still don't embrace, for whatever reason, matchmaking in 2020. You got, we gotta protect the kids with these friend codes. Dude, Nintendo has no idea what Xbox Live looked like in 2004, you know? Those OG days of Xbox Live, these people fighting on Twitter don't even fucking know. That shit was the streets. That shit was mean. People use slurs like you and I use and and but. That's how you, just how you, uh, conjunction. Anyway, back to DMCA music. Oh, yes. Ah. <laughs> Smooth listening. I haven't had any negative experiences with Nintendo, so I can talk positively about them. I never felt ripped off by one of their products. I bought the GameCube with my own money. It was the first system I bought with my own money. I still have the same fucking Wii. The original Wii that was backwards compatible with the GameCube and has the GameCube ports. The motherfucker still ticks like a Swiss watch. I wish I wouldn't have lost my GameCube, gave it to my nephew. It's gone, 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 but still, it's like... I heard their hard hardware quality had started to slide, and I hope that's not true because that's one thing Nintendo is really good about. I've, I've got like five fucking Xbox controllers laying around here, and all of them have an issue. All of them. I just got a new one in December, and already it's like grip is going. It's always some random ass thing. And you got this, you got this Wii. And this Wii's like. You know, two decades old, and it... My... Nieces and nephew don't know how to turn things off. They don't... You know, they can't conceptualize bills. They need that money, they do. But... They ran my Wii for like five days straight. And it still runs. Hey, was that it, by the way? Hey, yeah, it was it. Nice. 
How long is this episode now? We've talked about Nintendo. We've talked about infrastructure. Sweet. Look at us doing good. So I'm not going to use Alexander again. So she's got the cool wyvern set. She's looking good. She's feeling good. I'm going to go ahead and deck her out with some red talent shit. Well, it's probably going to take at least a couple missions, right? I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll let the base operate at full capacity and then we'll switch it up. Would you shut the fuck up? I love that. Plan. I've been, I, uh, except the fact that his animation was breaking, he was sliding across the ground. And little stuff like that in State of Decay really brings me in. When they pop up in the middle of nowhere and your character has the range of motion of, uh, sea cucumber, that's when I get taken out of the experience. What? Is he searching for buffalo? What the fuck, man? Why couldn't- why- he somehow built a wall. His butt and his chest formed an invisible line. There was no- NONE SHALL PASS! Worth. Better post it on Twitter. Oh my god, kill the god dang screamer. It's gonna... You fucking little bastard. Shut up. I don't even care about the zombies coming in. It's just annoying. Nothing to turn your nose up at. Version meal put in... I shot you in the face. Oh, this is like... This is what Brazers is going to look like in the zombie apocalypse. Did you see that? Those Blunder two getting it? Back. It's nice. Where? There's at least half a dozen rucksacks just laying around that I haven't been able to grab. Thanks. There's what a little something to show want? how much I appreciate the help. Want to join us? Want to join us? Are you a cook? We could use you. Wow, it's already full. Hey, bloater. Walk. This she'll actually die. The last few bloaters to walk into the fire, like... They were... F no, no issues. No issues. Back to base. Hey, what's your hero bonus? Oh, yeah, too late, but it sucks. Kind of a long description for the same thing, though. You want to go, Mr. Farrell? I'll go. Play this game. Where the fuck are you? You were right up beside a car. You're that fast. Sometimes you got to miss some shots, make some shots just to feel better about yourself. This guy's still on us. I don't really care about this, guys. I just want to finish the thing. I just want to do the thing, finish the thing. Uh, we can go this way if we take the shortcut. So we got Series X. That's going to come out in November. PS5 is apparently also going to come out in November. And the Switch got a port of the Outer Worlds, and it looks like it's on the PlayStation 1. You're here now, Eleanor? Oh, you're close. Real close. 2 plus labor is trash, because once you build your base, it doesn't matter anymore. 
This should actually level her up to agriculture. Where's the big comfy chair? Why the hell's it in there? Whatever, I guess it doesn't matter. I wish it added a bed. I'd totally fall asleep in a recliner. It's easy. Santa Maria! I could be dumb and just go attack him, but let's just get her back to base. She probably leveled up her gardening, right? We planted the seeds. Probably at the end of the action. She's planting seeds even though she's two miles away from the base. The shortcut's over here. Do I have a bounty to turn in? Hey, I do. While we're over here... Make yourself at home. Hello. Are you willing to see to a task that needs doing? When are they gonna bring back the World War II weapons? That won't work. Yeah, I'm all run out. But don't worry, we got a bounty to make ten cups of coffee. Actually, don't worry times two, because you're done. Uh, tire you, we're gonna grab Duncan, we're gonna finish this fight, Master Chief. Oh, this music is a good one. It's a good one. No Anthem 2.0 until 2021 at least, they're saying. No big update this year. Anthem is gonna be two years old in the exact same spot it was in launch, and it's a major AAA launch, uh, release from the biggest publisher in the world. How did this happen? And why is it dying with not a whimper, but a... with not a bang, but a whimper? It's one of the more confusing questions in all of video games. But at the same time, I feel like people don't really even care to fucking know the answer for anymore. Though it's still a moderately popular subreddit, and if you put a video up and you're kind of a big YouTuber, it's a subject that still gets a decent amount of views. People, I think, mostly just want to see the shit show. Which is unfair, because no game was more of a shit show than Fallout 76. And yet, it has managed to survive. Granted, 76 has managed to push content. Sometimes shitty, unethical, money-gouging content, but content nonetheless. And Anthem has not released content in... a year? The Catalysm? Well, they did that little Christmas event. The Christmas event that went all the way through... like, March or something, and... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Duncan. Hey, hey, Duncan. He's our man. If he can't do it, no one can go, Duncan. I'm home. Did y'all keep out of trouble? <laughs> yep, it's a zombie. What <laughs> that fifty cow? Let him know. to go kill a zombie it's a human we got a lot of people in here all right duncan probably won't get to play with her again so i should definitely where's the quipper with something i don't care about because should also be the home stretch, I'd imagine. This full auto shotgun's excellent. Again, she just needs a gun that's not really gonna matter.
RTX blade? Actually, like giving these people heavy. It's kind of nice just to have it in the mix. All right, Duncan. I guess we were due for a run of good luck. <laughs> 